this. There's a lot of discussion nowadays that which market cap is good. Should I be in large cap funds? Should I be in small cap funds? And definitely people are worried with the kind of move that has happened in small caps. This month, I will give you my thoughts on what is the perfect market cap category to be in as a long term investor. Should you be in large caps or should you be in small caps? So the first thing is that the current concerns have started because the kind of flows that you are seeing to small cap funds is massive. So if you look at your screen, you'll find that in 2023 and a few months of 2024, the flows to small cap funds have been the highest. And right at the bottom, you will find that the large cap category, which generally was to attract the largest funds, is attracting the least amount of money. And this is a real big mismatch that is happening. This has got a lot of people worried. Uh, even the regulator has stepped in rightly so. That really is small cap becoming a bubble. The reason why this mismatch is felt so strongly is that if you look at the NSC 500 market cap breakup, almost 71% is large cap and only 10% is small cap. And the mismatch is that the largest funds are flowing to the smallest slice of the cake, which is only 10% of the market. And the biggest slice of the cake, which is 71% large cap, is actually attracting the least flows. So can you really figure out the mismatch? I go and meet a lot of investors and each one of them is nowadays participating directly in equity and their portfolio is totally small cap in nature. So why are these flows happening to small caps? If you look at the next slide, you will realize that ultimately it's a golden rule that investors chase returns. And if you look at the returns market cap wide for the last 10 years, you will find that in the last three to four years, especially post COVID, the returns of small cap mutual funds, which is at the bottom, has been spectacular. And that is why money is flowing there. However, on the flip side, the large cap funds, which are right at the top, you will find that the returns are muted. And this really explains why money is flowing to small caps rather than large caps. Investors chase returns. That is an absolute reality. And that is why most people are in small caps rather than large caps. So this brings me to one of my favorite lines in the stock market, which came from the movie Wall Street, which said, greed is good. Greed is good. Returns will always attract investors, but, but there is also an element of risk. And let us look at that a little more closely. So what you see on your screen is that for the last 20 year returns of large cap versus small cap. This starts from 2004 because the index, the small cap indexes are there from 2004. The green shaded area is the returns you would have got if you had invested in the NSC 100, which is the large cap representation. But the red line is the small cap stocks. And you will clearly see that small cap stocks are outperforming the large caps over an elongated period of times. In fact, if you divide the market into three segments, you realize that in 2008 bull market, small caps beat large caps by miles. So also in the 2017-18 up move, and you are seeing that right now. So essentially the case for small cap investing is massive because you will see that small caps have outperformed large caps in each of these bull markets. But as I said, there's another side to the story. There is always a but. The but is that if you start looking at the drawdowns, drawdowns is a measure of risk. You know, there are measure, multiple measures of risk. You can take something like a beta or you can take something like a Sortino ratios. These are all sophisticated ratios to make you understand risk adjusted returns. But drawdowns I find are the real risk that investors run. It is the raw number of the losses that investors can expect. So we are using drawdowns as a measure of risk or losses. So you will clearly see that in every bull market, when it goes through a correction, 
the small caps give back very very sharply just as there are smiley faces there are also many cry faces whether it happened in 2009 again in 2013 in 2018 and 2020 you'll find that very often when markets correct small caps give back all the outperformance and the drawdowns are massive so what we have done is we've spliced this 20 year data into three parts and let's look at each of these parts and understand that what is the play out what is the return and the drawdown that an investor would have to experience in the first phase this is the 2004 to 2008 bull market you will notice that the red line has beaten the blue line by miles however when the markets corrected or crashed in 2009 89 you'll realize that the small caps gave back all the outperformance in fact the drawdown was as steep as 77% and as an investor you'll say oh well you know i didn't buy at the top i bought it earlier but practically let me tell you most of the allocations come late in the bull market in fact the maximum money comes near the top so however much this chart may seduce you to believe that if you had invested in 2004 in 2003 4 there was hardly anyone investing in small caps because in a bear market that's the last place you want to be in so what you will notice is that yes small caps give you outstanding returns on the upside but when corrections happen the drawdowns are massive 77% almost 80% was the loss if you had invested most people also think that well i can sell at the top i will participate in the up move and i'll be smart enough to exit again through practical experience let me tell you a negligible number can do it most people get stuck in this and as i said this is abhimanyu's chakra view we all know how to enter the chakra view to exit is very very difficult selling is the challenge and most most people are unable to do it so the fact is that as an investor yes if you will see the outperformance on the upside even the downside is a reality okay this must be a abnormal case 2008 financial market crisis let's move to the next phase this was post that 2013 to almost 2020 where we fell in covid here also you will find that massive outperformance by small caps but in 2018 when sebi did the reclassification for mutual funds you will find that small caps gave back all their gains and in 2020 when covid hit it was worst the drawdown was almost 65% the third phase which is today again you will find that post covid 2020 the outperformance that is the red line beats the green line massively and that is the reason why you are seeing very big flows to the small cap funds please understand that i'm not saying that small caps are a bubble it's run up it is the nature of small caps they will do well in every bull market the issue that comes is that the most of the allocation is coming in 2023 and 24 so as i said very little money was allocated to this market cap space 3 years ago the money is coming it now how long this bull market lasts nobody knows even i don't know yes small caps will do well but as an investor the key thing you need to understand is that drawdowns will come the drawdowns will be large are you able to handle it that's it that's all i want to say i just want to say in completion of the line greed is good but are you prepared for the drawdowns this is one of my favorite slides it comes from the great legendary boxer called mike tyson he says everyone has a plan until they are punched in the face no fund manager no wealth advisor can tell you rightly whether you should be in large caps small caps there's no formula you are the deciding factor what is your ability to handle drawdowns returns everyone wants high returns small caps clearly are the outperformers but the question you got to ask yourself my friend is are you ready for the drawdowns if you are ready to handle those drawdowns all power to you that's the place to go but in reality 
I know through practical experience, most people cannot handle that. Then, you've got to be okay with something that performs a little less optimum, but gives you lesser drawdowns, something that you can handle, and more importantly is enjoy the long-term journey. With that, I leave you for this month. Thank you.